What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Total Human Optimization Podcast. <clears throat> I've been away for a minute, but I'm glad to be back here, sitting with our new master trainer for kettlebells, Marcus Martinez. Marcus, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. It's been great to have you out here. And of course, the indomitable one, the master himself, John Wolf. Oh, <laughs> what's up, Wolfie? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> so, you know, when uh, we're building this, you know, team of X-Men, these team of superstars, each specialist in their own implements. And of course, you know, kettlebells are something that's a super important implement to me. It's something I use virtually every single workout that I'm in the gym. And so, you know, when John said he had a kettlebell guy, I was a little skeptical at first. I was like, you sure? You know, like, what's it going to be? So you came out and the first thing I wanted to do was to get a workout with you and just see how you worked in that kind of training dynamic, see what kind of workout you put me through. And I have to say, and I'm not just pumping your tires, that was probably the single best workout that a new trainer has ever given me for the first workout. Awesome. It was like phenomenal like the the variability of the different things that i was both learning and doing mixed with like finding the right workload because usually like people either try to smash me they're like oh it's aubrey i gotta smash him <laughs> like just and or they're like you know kind of feeling it out they don't want to take it too far they just want to kind of suss things out but you were able to like really strike that perfect chord and uh so i knew we were in good hands awesome. right from the start there no, it's, it's good. I mean, it takes a lot of time to be able to hone in on that and to not just want to smash you because that's how most trainers think. They're like, okay, I gotta, I'm gotta, i going to burn him out. I'm going to do as much as I can. I'm going to leave him just a sweaty puddle on the ground, but that right. doesn't make us better. And my goal has always been, what is going to make that person better? How can we have a better moving human rather than just more weight, more reps, more time? And that fits in super well with our whole philosophy here. I mean, that's the... I mean, sometimes you get smashed, yeah. <laughs> but only when the smashing is appropriate. You know, it's intentional smashing rather than haphazard Donkey Kong style. Like no matter where you are, what you're coming in on, you know, you're getting the same thing. And, you know, that's really kind of the foundation of our fitness program. Without a doubt. I think, you know, when we're working with uh, general population or we're working with elite level athletes, we're always trying to find that right balance of well, everybody needs to move better, like Marcus says. Everybody should feel good. They should feel more competent. And they leave just more capable of doing whatever life throws at them. And so I know when Marcus worked with uh, Tim Kennedy and his boys last time he was out here, that was one of the things that, you know, a lot of times is it has to break the norm of even high-level, high-performing athletes. is like, well, I still want you to leave – capable of yeah, performing at good. a high level. Yeah, mm. feeling good, leaving the session, feeling capable of going out and doing the next training session. Of course, those guys are animals. So <laughs> so you, you pretty much smash them in 30 minutes later, an hour they later. They bounce they, back. They bounce back. They're, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're not normal human beings, right? Um, but, but at the same time, they value it too. You know, it's not always what people want to hear at the time, but when you when you give them what they really need they respect it because since then they've spoken really highly of marcus continuously and just this last weekend like you said this recurring theme you know tim and and his crew had their sheepdog response training seminar and they pull us in to talk about that very same thing as well how do you maintain the chassis how do you keep the chassis ready to take on whatever weapon or whatever opportunity and be able to utilize the human body to protect yourself, protect others? Well, your fitness is a, is a huge component of that. And, and the type of fitness that we proliferate, I think, is is the right kind of fitness for that type of mindset. Yeah, I agreed. So, Marcus, before we get into your background and what brought you into this journey, why kettlebells, man? Why should anybody pay attention and give a shit about kettlebells? It's one of those tools, as soon as I picked it up, I knew, okay, this is, this is something different. And just practicing with it, I realized that, I mean, you talk about using your body as one, that full body, that full unit right there, nothing is better than being able to, co to go from ballistic to <laughs> slow exercises, a million different movements, awesome flows, and they all work together that just made me better at what I was doing. At the time, I was playing collegiate tennis, and... I mean, it's not a martial art or something hardcore, but I found I was moving better. I was stronger. My conditioning was so much better. And I didn't need a whole line of equipment at the gym. I didn't need a bunch of stuff. I was able to get an amazing workout with two kettlebells. 
So mm-hmm. for there, that was the first thing was just the, and then the portability of it, the time, I mean, everything just flowed with it. Yeah. It's one of those, one of those tools that can replace virtually an entire gym all, oh, totally. all on its own. And that's, that's the, the crazy cool thing about kettlebells. And then beyond that, when you do have an entire gym, then it can play its specific role and find, you know, meet these niches, these movement patterns that can actually offer something that's completely unique. So I think that's the, that's the cool balance of really all of our equipment is they have the ability to be the only thing that you need. Like when I went out to California for a month, I had a mace and a kettlebell. And I sometimes would go to the beach and swing around on the monkey bars and stuff. But with that, I mean, I put on like 10 pounds of muscle just working out with that alone. Like I didn't need a gym. I didn't, I love having the gym. I mean, it's great when you have it, but I didn't need it. I had the tools and it's just a matter of the amount of effort and knowledge that you put into those, you can really get out. And then obviously in the gym setting, when you do have all these other options, then you can pick and choose. Maybe I'm just doing 360s or the infinity flow with the mace. And maybe I'm just doing, you know, some kind of press with the kettlebells or whatever it is, you can just kind of sub it in. So it's, really pretty cool how all of our tools can be the only thing you use or just one of the many things in the arsenal. Absolutely. And then just to be able to supplement what you're doing and how it helps other areas. So if you're a deadlift or you're a squatter, cool, let's do some snatches, some swings, some juggling and how that's going to help build your entire body. So it's not just either or you can combine them all. Mm -hmm. So I'm convinced that you know, you're providing kettlebell instruction at the highest level I've ever seen. And I've been exposed to a lot of different, but I know, you know, John feels the same way. And and many of the people who went through your cert who've been through a lot of these feel the same way. So tell us about your journey. How did you get to this level of mastery that finds you in this seat right here? Man, it started off with, I was just looking for something different. I was tired of the, you know, the same old bodybuilding routines. I found a, an article, old school article from Mike Mahler, and it was a kettlebell. So I'm like, okay, this looks kind of interesting, a little different. Tried the workout with a dumbbell. Thought, okay, this is pretty cool. Got myself a kettlebell. From there, I was hooked. Immediately started doing workshops, worked with Pavel, Steve Cotter, all the OGs in the kettlebell world. And uh, the more I practiced, the more I experimented, the more I liked it. So. From there, I started my training practice. I started my gym that was a kettlebell center and uh, just did classes, personal training, just experimented with a million different things and started my own certification out of there and started traveling, doing all that. And so it was just a long, long process of fine tuning. And so it wasn't just follow this person's program, Mm -hmm. follow this person. It was take this person's knowledge. How can I tweak that and make it a little bit better for me and for my clients? How can I take this and move it a little bit better for that person? So it was just tons of experience. And from there, it culminated into this, to where I am now. So, I mean, to say, oh yeah, I swung a kettlebell around. I mean, that'd be understatement of the year for me. (laughs) It's been 10 years of nonstop just dedication and practice to it. And I think one of the cool things that really fits with the whole on it philosophy is to remove the dogma surrounding a lot of these different camps i mean kettlebells they get very dogmatic and this is the only way this is the way and it's not they're not using biomechanical reasons or any other kind of scientific reasons or studies or anything like that it's just that's the religion of their of their practice you know and i think what on it's done is come through and say forget all that bullshit like whatever really works is is what we're going to provide and i think that's what you've done in your own kettlebell education and i think that's allowed you to leap ahead of a lot of these other different schools is just not getting dogmatic not saying this is the only way to do it everything has a purpose everything some things may be a little bit risky but may have gains you know so you have to weigh all of these different factors or some things you know, and just look at it from a totally pragmatic viewpoint. And uh, I think that really, in any field, advances your ability to educate and assimilate knowledge. Yeah, so, you know, that's one of the things that really attracted us to Marcus. Um, I've been following Marcus's career for probably seven or eight years. I mean, when when I started doing online content with uh, Isik and everybody, you know, uh, Marcus was working with with Mark back in the days and yep. they're doing very similar stuff and they were in- incorporating clubs and maces and a lot of the content that we we've assimilated into the Onnit Academy curricula and that's that's really something that I thought was was inspiring because there weren't very many people who were 
using a multi-modality approach. So they weren't using different tools. They're either a kettlebell guy or a, like a, or a club guy. And, you know, and yeah, it's, it's kind of, well, once you select one and you just put your, all your eggs in one basket, then of course that looks and feels like the answer to every problem the world has, right? So yeah. so the, the thing about it was, was as time went on, obviously we saw a continued evolution of, of how those other tools influence the way we move. And that's something that other people just don't, they don't buy into, they don't see. But if you never swung a mace and you never swung a club, then the way you swing a kettlebell is going to be inherently different because mm -hmm. you don't see the value in looking at things from these different angles. These tools and these these different methods, they open your mind to different ways of solving the same problem, I think, is, is and that's, the And the that's answer. a big part of the certification that we've brought here to Onnit is unlocking your imagination. So not being so dogmatic. It's based off principles, the sequence of strength. You know things that work for any tool but then being able to unlock into different ranges of motion different planes of motion so we're not just doing the same old thing i mean i made the joke you know i, I don't want everyone to go hashtag the on it academy kettlebell and like no you're creating your own thing from this we want you to mm -hmm. build and maintain and experiment with yourself and your clients based on what you learn here and not just think of it as one way yeah yeah i think that's that's key yeah. so the people who are, you know, experiencing this certification, obviously, you're getting a base of knowledge for themselves. But it's also, you know, for trainers who want to be able to provide this to their clients, you know, or even if it's you wanting to teach your buddy yeah. how to do it. So, you know, how do you handle the balance of the training for yourself and also the coaching cues for somebody else? Is that just kind of inherent or is that something you really it's, work with? It's part of what we've put together with this so that we have that foundation. So someone who's never used a kettlebell before or they have very limited uh, experience with it, we have that foundation that's absolutely necessary to be able to build to the rest. And someone who's already passed that, we all have to practice the basics. We're gonna want, we wanna practice the basics all the time. So that's gonna just hone in on that. And so as we progress through the course and through the weekend, we start throwing more and more things based off of what we learned from the beginning. So that way we all get something from it. So now I have something that I can work on myself and I've made sure that every person had that question in mind. How can you find, what can you find from this cert that's gonna help you, help a client and help your business? So that mm -hmm. way they come out of it, they come into it thinking differently. They're not just coming into it like, yeah, I'm gonna swing a bunch of bells around. No, we want them to have something that they can use immediately for themselves and training. So even if they're not a trainer, they can go train their mom, they can go train their friend. And now we have more people doing better form using the tool that's going to help just more people. Yeah. And, and the big thing about it was over the course of the weekend, Aubrey, exactly the scenario you're talking about. You had people who had no experience, people who have no professional identity as a trainer, nor even an interest to be doing it as a profession because they already got their gig, right? But they're here for personal improvement. Then you have people who are trainers who have no kettlebell experience. Then you have people who are trainers who've gone through all of the other certifications and not to not to say that those other certifications are any less valuable they just provide a different perspective right and and those perspectives are all funnels into a greater mass of knowledge and i think that's mm -hmm. what we continually always want to preach is like hey that's great it's just like everything else that serves you really well until it doesn't serve you as well anymore like any stimulus right sure. mm -hmm. and so um, one of the things that was really eye-opening for some of those people who had gone through a lot of the other certifications is when you define something as an ideal or optimal or the one true way, the problem is, is what happens when that one true way is injurious to a subset of the population? What is the solution? Well, if you don't give them a perspective that enables the coach to make a better decision for that one person mm -hmm. or that segment of the population, then they're hurting people, right? Sure. And yeah. so when one of the things that was eye-opening on the first day was Marcus did an excellent job of honoring all of the Onnit Academy principles and fundamentals because we've been charting these through lines through the whole process. But for those people who had gone through those other courses and they're like, well, this is the way we do it. Well, we show them a way to progressively get towards those goals rather and and still say that this is success. This is this is correct. Um, it was almost like they had to fight to 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 reaffirm that this was this was true. But then they realized like, well, 
I've been forcing people down that path too soon. I've been forcing people into an alignment that isn't strong. And this is kind of the, the, the through line is it's about alignment, challenging your body's ability to maintain alignment. It doesn't matter if you hit the end range or if you hit 60% of that range or whatever the case is, if you stay true to your body's ability to hold form and challenge yourself with these different incremental variables, then you're going to adapt. You're going to get strong as strong as hell and, and you're going to have a lot of fun. And that's one yeah. of the things that Marcus is keeps <laughs> on saying is like, we're going to have a, a fucking, we're going to have a lot of fun this weekend. <laughs> and, and when I say we're fucking going to have a lot of fun, that's actually the words that Marcus says a lot. <laughs> no, that's, no, absolutely. First off, this is, as serious as this is for our lives to be able to move well that this isn't serious shit. I mean, this is fitness. This should yeah. be fun. This is the yeah. one thing that should be fun in this world. So that's why, I mean, I wasn't going to do this if it wasn't going to be fun. And every time I come and do a workshop or do or did a cert, I made sure, I mean, we're laughing in the beginning. That doesn't take away from what we're going to learn and how we're going to make sure this is based off of a set of principles and it's, you know, serious business. But at the end of the day if you're playing serious yeah. you're an amateur yes, you know it's like if you have to if you have to act as if you're serious you know like it doesn't matter if you're an inst a coach an instructor or a shaman you know if you're like i'm in serious mode because it's serious business <laughs> you're a fucking rookie it means you know you, like if you can't laugh you're playing the wrong game absolutely yeah no i'm, I'm with that 100 percent. and that's that is one of the great things about these tools is it's fun. I mean, you, you're learning new stuff. You're testing new stuff. I mean, my favorite thing is the inverted press right now because a okay. lot of people think it's kind of easy. So I trick people like Orlando into trying it and <laughs> offer cash rewards for doing it. And then they get it up oh, and, been a good idea. and then the thing flops off. Or, and it's just kind of my own devious way to fuck with people in the gym. But you have fun with these different tools because you test yourself in different you know, it's almost like playing horse with yourself, yeah. you know, where you have different different skills that you're learning and different things that you can practice. Absolutely. And the thing with the kettlebell, doing stuff like that, inverted, juggling, it just creates awareness. And that awareness is going to allow you to, that transfers into everything. It transfers into sports. It transfers into life. It transfers into everything. Like I joked about, you know, my daughter doesn't come up to me right in front of me and say, Dad, pick me up and waits until she's nice and stiff. She jumps on me on the side. She runs up to me. It's like, yeah. you have to always be ready. So having that awareness to be able to move your body carefully is also going to injury proof you. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the bulletproofing process. So one thing that's unique to kettlebells, I think, is that no matter what, if you post a swing online, no matter how good it is, no matter who you are, there's going to be trolls. Yeah, like it's like the dogma of the swing is so strong. Well, that's it's why like, it's like unbelievable out there. No, bro, doing it wrong. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> you need a forty-five degree hip hinge, yeah. and you need no. I mean, that's why we show so many different variations based off of those principles. But yeah, that's where you get into that dogmatic view, and that's a way that you can now own that. I don't own a swing. I've learned a swing, and then I tweaked it and made it my own, and then I tweaked it, and someone else is going to tweak it. Yeah. So to be able to say like this is the only way. Okay, well then you keep doing that, and then like John alluded to, sometimes someone not might not be able to get into that range of motion. You're going to injure someone because you've only used that one way well let's give you a few more tools a few more ways to look at this and now we're able to hit a bigger population and they're not going to get so stuck in that way of thinking so mm -hmm. and also they're going to have fun now, yeah, back, fun. back at the back at the fun factor <laughs> Did we say fun already yeah because <laughs> you know i think that the one thing that a lot of people get away from you know that playing serious you said that yeah and i didn't really think about that for a long time but that was something that always turned me off in a lot of communities like mm -hmm. why is everybody so serious about this this is something that i did for personal improvement i did it for enjoyment and then it just happened to be a career that i fell into you know yeah eight years down down the line later i was like oh i've, I've gone through all these seminars and i learned all this stuff but i actually enjoy this so i'm going to actually <laughs> do this professionally um the the fun factor especially right now in this day and age with fitness we have to have highly technical proficient coaches where you're teaching how to use all these tools we, there's a skill development process that's something that you said aubrey is part of what you enjoy right so you, you're working on these skills so you need to have a guide that can help you get attain these skills but that is largely because it's an experiential process people want to have fun in the process they need they need to be able to say okay well i'm learning new skills all the time i'm getting new stimulus all the time it doesn't mean that's haphazard 
it, like what Marcus was saying is there's all these entry points to get down one road, but it doesn't always feel like you're on that one path where you're like, okay, how do you get better at doing this press? Well, I just do a 10,000 of the same variation of press. <laughs> Good luck collecting next month's uh, training fees from that person. Yeah. It doesn't mean yeah. that that the only way to improve that one mechanic, that one skill, is to bore them with that one variation. There's just so many ways to problem solve and go about this. Some of the activation drills that Marcus uses in the course and how he trains a lot of his fighters, it's highly dynamic. It's partner work. Man, I was like, well, this is just so great because you take that social element where you're, you're teaming up and you're working as, as a team uh, with you and a partner and, of course, the coach there. And then everybody's highly engaged, highly accountable. And that, that Can't phone it in. You, yeah, you can't, you can't not have a good time, especially because whatever you do to that person, guess what? You get it back. It's coming right back at you. So. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's just it's so many different ways of going about this. And so many different ways of keeping people engaged. And I think that's why we have all these different coaches also is they bring these different elements. The things that Marcus was doing are not inherently what all the other coaches are doing. And the things that Isik does or Shane does, they're, they're different, but they all hold true to the same, there's some fundamental purpose, the same principles, because it's a principle-based system. Yeah. And, um, and it's, 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 so powerful to see all these people bringing in and putting into the pot what they uniquely bring to the table is is pretty awesome. No doubt. So there's a lot of people probably listening to this who have never touched a kettlebell, like period. And maybe it's a motivation thing, or maybe it's they're just comfortable in the barbell space, or you know, elliptical machines, or whatever they're whatever they're comfortable with, like. What's your advice for like pushing the boundaries or getting the motivation to get in there and get after it? For someone who never used a kettlebell, I always recommend just pick one exercise. Don't look at a whole program. Don't try to change your entire way of doing things. Pick one exercise that's going to help you. So for my athletes who are hardcore barbells or hardcore calisthenics or whatever, it's like, okay, we're just going to pick one exercise and just introduce that. As we start progressing, then we can play around with some different ones and that gets them excited because then they're like, okay, I've mastered this movement. So for the people that are, most of the time people that don't use kettlebells it's because they've never used it before and they don't wanna look stupid. They're worried about how it's gonna look and how they're gonna feel. Uh, I don't wanna, and they kind of pull away from it. Okay, fine, let's do something that you feel comfortable with and then as they do that, I throw something else at them that they've never done and they're able to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of stepping in, but a lot of times- so what, are, what, are, what are those exercises that you, tend to commonly find yourself recommending if it's just that one? If it's just that one, I love halos. I love bottoms up like you referred to earlier because it's kind of viewed as a, or typically viewed as an expert or a, a tougher exercise, but beginners love it because they see right away. As soon as you turn that kettlebell upside down, mm -hmm. oh crap, like this is different. Um, I love explosive work with like explosive deadlifts, uh, hand transfers around the bodies, things that everybody can pretty much do, but looks different than something they've ever done before. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, rotational stuff gets them excited because then they see, oh, I feel myself moving in these different planes. I'm moving from position to position. It gets them just super excited. Yeah, the ability to transfer from your feet all the way yep. through an overhead is pretty unique with kettlebells. And I also think, you know, the windmill exercise is something that windmills are pretty fantastic. much every athlete should add to their to their protocol. I mean, when you're doing windmills, it's like you're strengthening muscles, but also your soul. You know, it's like it's like hitting it's, something it's so like deep sear. in the spine. <laughs> you know, it's like soul. this is my will that I'm building. You know, and that's that's something that's I think you know you can do that with other implements, but kettlebells are particularly suited for that. I think totally. I mean, getting comfortable in uncomfortable positions is one of the big things I give to my athletes because if you can get comfortable, if you can get comfortable in a windmill, you're going to be comfortable pretty much everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And then once they progress, every one of my clients, we get into some form of flow or juggling and that just, 
that gets them more excited than anything. So yeah. better than any PRs, they get just super pumped. When are we going to do that again? My classes would always say, when are we going to juggle again? I'd be like, oh, we just got new floors. I don't want you dropping yet. But so they, they love that kind of stuff. And the gram, the gram likes juggling. I mean, if you wanted to go down in the DM, <laughs> oh. you want to go down in the DM, throw some kettlebell juggling up there. <laughs> throw that out. Not that anything goes down in my DM. I throw shit out there all the time. I'm constantly looking since that song came out. I'm like, man, something's going down in the DM. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's gone down in the DM. <laughs> so disappointing. It's set such high expectations. Snapchat me debt. Uh, I probably shouldn't finish that. I, 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 I don't know about the whole Snapchat. <laughs> uh, but if you uh, if you want to listen to the song, Yo Gotti, it's strong, strong. It's a club banger these days. <laughs> um, cool. Well, I know that we have. So obviously we have the certifications where people can can reach you, and then we also have the On an Academy On Demand online training. Yes, um, you're part of the Master Coaches Channel Pack, um, so they can actually follow along not only with workouts but full programming. Absolutely, just Four with week kettlebell instructionals, body weight. Mm -hmm. just kettlebells. They throw in a little bit of body weight, but it's about mastery. So it's not just about smashing you with a thousand swings. We want to make you better, move better, squat better, swing better. Just like I said, move, be a better moving human being. Yeah. What's your favorite of our sculpted kettlebells, Marcus? Ugh, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna have to go with the chimp or the uh, the the gorilla. The gorilla. That thing is just, the gorilla it's is just primal as shit, man. That's yeah. just <laughs> whenever I see that, it's like I just want to swing that, snatch it, throw it around, juggle it. It's like yeah. it, it's begging to be. Uh, have you to seen? Lift it. Have you seen a gigantic one yet? Oh, the the um, the Bigfoot. Oh, what the? What is that? <laughs> Holy crack. Yeah. Okay, this is my new favorite one. Uh, oh my gosh. For those who obviously can't see this, I've just handed Marcus our 105 pound oh my God. monster. Okay, yeah. There we monster. go. The so, Kraken. The Kraken. To answer your question, the Kraken would be the my Kraken favorite. <laughs> That's, well, that's we'll look. We'll look forward to seeing you try and wrestle the kraken. Oh, there's gonna be some own, snatching with that guy. Kraken, kraken, and I are going down. It's going down with the kraken. It's going, it's going down with the kraken. Going down with the kraken. Seen that kraken snatch? Hey, Not hey. many people can conquer the kraken snatch. You really gotta, you gotta put your hard hat on if you're conquering the kraken snatch. I, I think Marcus got this one, man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, we'll I wasn't we'll kidding. Look. It's going down. <laughs> It's going up and then it's coming back down. And then it's coming back up and then. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, cool. Anything else? Uh, anything else you guys want to add? No, we're just really excited to bring this kettlebell search to the market. We had just uh, got this first the first launch of it this last weekend and rave reviews from uh, all the attendees, whether they're experienced in other systems or not. Like yeah. I, like I said, I think one thing to just touch on is is that. Uh, in the presentation, we honor all of those other systems as yes. contributors to what it is that we now get the privilege to bring to market now. You know, I was a classically trained in terms of classically trained, you know, hard style yeah. RKC when Pavel and like all the OGs, like Marcus had said, were all part of one organization. All those guys are all part of their own organization at this point in time. Yeah. Talk about Martone, Mahler, Cotter, Maxwell. Hey, those sound like names that have made really big, you know, carved big out impact. segments of the po population, segments of the market for themselves. And and they have a unique presentation. It all came from, you know, uh, we all walk similar paths and now we're all walking different paths. I think that thankfully Marcus has walked a unique path that's allowed him and allowed us to kind of see the the – not uniformity, but the convergence. The yeah, the convergence exactly. That we 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 these paths have converged for a reason, but with Marcus and on it, and it's really apparent now as we have a mean house, how how important it was for us to be working together on this on this project, and uh, it's it's pretty phenomenal. I think that you know everybody who's gone through those other education systems will benefit greatly yes. people who have not gone through those education systems will benefit greatly as well and that and that there's no discrediting what other people are doing by coming to any of our education system that's no the doubt. biggest thing i want to take away from that is that we do not discredit we do not say this is the best the only way this is the way that well we that's built. getting back to being a religion again you know <laughs> exactly. i mean this is everything has value everything has value you know so as long as you look at it and 
take the valuable part and discard the rest, you know, eat around the rot in the apple, you know, don't throw the whole apple out, you know, and that's, that's really the, the holistic on it philosophy. So glad that we're keeping it consistent all the way through that's all cool. aspects and nothing better than that. Well, cool. I appreciate you being a part of this awesome. thing, man. Great look forward cool. to working out with you. And uh, I'm stoked that you're providing the service for all of our customers and everybody, everybody around the way. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be part of the team. It's beautiful. Wolfie. I'm happy. <laughs> if Wolf's happy, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Much love, everybody. Peace.